Welcome to Associated University, a group that is designed to provide supply chain management professionals with access to information on practical solutions concerning the industry's current hot topics. Today we will be discussing forklift fleet replacement and acquisition strategies. This session will demonstrate how to identify the economic life of an asset and create an effective fleet replacement strategy that can result in decreased equipment, labor, and maintenance expenses. For today's webinar, we have two presenters. First is Scott Penninger, who is a fleet optimization manager at Associated. As a seasoned consultant, Scott has more than 25 years of technical and operations experience in helping clients effectively manage fleets of all sizes over a variety of industries. Secondly, we have Christian Rentdorf, who is currently the fleet manager at Associated. He comes to us with over 25 years of experience in supply chain, material handling, and aviation industries. As a seasoned technical expert, he has helped clients significantly reduce their maintenance costs and implement cost-effective strategies to ensure the effective utilization of their fleet. And now I will pass it over to Christian to get us started. Thank you, Sherry. Good afternoon, everyone. We appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your day to uh, cover this topic of discussion. And today what we're going to start with is just some of the items we're going to be discussing, which will be current trends. Uh, standard metrics to be utilizing, uh, fleet replacement strategy, acquisition strategies. So that brings us to this slide, um, which was taken from a study done by Modern Material Handlings showing the average age of a material handling fleet. What we have here is showing that uh, more than 10 years seems to be uh, the highest percentage. And there could be a number of reasons for that, uh, especially over the last few years. We've had some increases in technologies. Perhaps there were some acquisitions, you know, uh, after the, the last recession we had. Um, but one thing that I have found interesting with uh, personal experience is that a lot of times customers don't even know how old their fleet is or it's actually older than what they thought. And we'll talk about a little bit more in detail as we go on to how to determine the actual age of your material handling equipment. So something that we like to discuss um, about a economic point of return, um, we're showing a plot graph here, and we have two axes of utilization and cost. And from these two inputs, we can make some determinations on where your lift truck stands um, in your fleet. And it kind of breaks down into four particular quadrants, which I call the four R's, of retain, replace, remove, or reallocate. The first one we'll talk about is the one where we're going to retain our equipment. These are trucks that have a low cost and high utilization. Well, that's exactly where you want to be. So for those particular pieces of equipment, we're not going to do anything, and we're going to retain those lift trucks. The next quadrant is a, either a reevaluate or what I'd mentioned is a reallocate. These are trucks that don't have a, a very high cost, but they have low utilization. So in those situations, you need to determine whether or not you can reassign them to another uh, duty in your facility or you have to make the evaluation of did you actually need them in the first place. And that could be something that you could potentially replace with a possible short-term rental or, or another possible option. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail as well. The third quadrant has to do with removing. And these are trucks that have low utilization and high cost. Well, that's what we want to avoid altogether. So that could be um, have to do with right-sizing your fleet or, or trucks that have become obsolete in your facilities. But it's important to identify these because we have uh, situations where I've seen a customer of ours has 10 trucks. Um, it's time to renew their leases for 10 more. And the question is, well, do you really need those 10? And it's important to look at uh, your utilization on those to determine whether or not you need them in the first place. Rentals could also be uh, something that could help with this. But to talk about that in a little bit more detail, um, uh, rentals in themselves, I think, is an important factor you need to consider with the replacement strategies. And I think a lot of people don't factor in the rental cost to their overall operating costs. And it's important to know what those rental costs are. One thing that I, I have seen with a lot of our customers is we have customers who will rent trucks, but their utilization of their existing fleet doesn't seem to justify it. And that's something you really need to take into consideration when renting. And another factor we'll see with a short-term rental is uh, someone will rent a truck for a short period of time, but then the next thing you know, that truck has been there for four, six, eight, nine months. And all of a sudden, you've spent enough money on that truck to have potentially used that towards an acquisition of a new piece of equipment. 
So it's something you very important to consider. And like we had mentioned in the previous slide, if you have trucks that you're not using and it is for a specific reason, perhaps you can offset the having to own that truck, maintain that truck, have that truck um, in your facility when you potentially could uh, just be able to use a short-term rental in, instead of having it. So things you need to keep into consideration and rentals is a key component of that. So it's important that you're taking that into consideration when we're creating replacement strategy. So the one quadrant we didn't talk about in the in the slides two ago was the one that is the topic of discussion today, and that is a replacement strategy for trucks that have high utilization, which means you're using them a lot in your facility, but they have that high cost. And that's really um, what we're focusing on today. So some of the metrics um, that we talked about were you know, age, hours, um, cost per hour is one that people have discussed a lot, but two that I think are very important and, and sometimes that get overlooked are um, the type of model of truck that's being looked at and the application. You know, there, there are various models of trucks and, and consequently, I think it's important that when you are looking at your cost, that you're looking at model specifics. There, there's a big difference between, let's say, a pallet truck and, and a Tura truck, so it's important that you look at those separately. But the, the, the one that I think is really important is the application. That is how you're using that piece of equipment. That can make a very large difference in the cost of operating that truck. An example I'll use is the pallet truck. We have many clients that will use a pallet truck to load and unload tractor trailers. And in that application, you would probably have a different cost uh, as opposed to using a pallet truck to transport materials from one side of a facility to another. In addition to the application, the environment can play a huge factor in your material handling equipment's cost. So it's really important that you focus on what is specific to your environment, what trucks you're using, how you're using them, and where they're at to um, get a, a good um, indication of your overall cost of your equipment. So this next slide is, again, was taken from a, um, a case study done by Modern Materials Handling, and this is just showing the different types of trucks that are found in, in our industries. You know, there are certain outliers that, that are different than your standard lift trucks. Some other examples of the applications that we're talking about, a freezer application. You know, and that environment's going to be a lot different than in a, in a pharmaceutical application. Whether you're doing long runs, if you're running multiple shifts, all of those things take into consideration. Distribution versus manufacturing, how you're using those trucks in those applications will have a, an overall effect on total cost. So, again, the most important thing I, I can try to reiterate is that it's important that you know what is specifically going on in your facilities. Don't get too hung up on industry standards. They're important just to have a, a point of reference when having discussions and the baseline information. But the most important thing I can say is you have to know what's going on specifically in your facility. So we discussed age and the question is, well, how do you determine the age of your equipment? Well, the best way to do that is by using the serial number identification tag that's on a truck. Um, virtually all vehicles will have that information embedded in the serial number. And the example that we're seeing here, and for the Raymond product, they will use the second set of numbers in that serial number. So for this example, it's 2018. Um, but that's not always the case with all manufacturers. For example, um, Yale's will embed that serial number and use it as a letter that's a code that you can then determine. So you may have to do some investigation into what that is, but uh, the, the best way, and if you're unfamiliar with wh where you acquired that piece of equipment, is to use the, the data tag or serial number on the truck. I will say that it is an OSHA requirement that these tags are both on the truck and are legible. So if you are going to be taking the time out to validate that information, and you're going out to your material handling equipment, and you cannot either find or read that, it's important that you get that done. There's critical information, not just the serial number, but things like capacities, weights, battery capacities, center of gravities that need to be displayed on the truck. As a caveat to that, a lot of uh, customers will use 
attachments on their equipment, whether it be a slip sheet attachment, a pallet clamp attachment. If you are using an attachment on your piece of equipment, it is important that you also have the supplemental data tag for that as well. So in your efforts to, uh, to validate this information, if you're going out to your piece of equipment and you don't see a supplemental data tag, it's important that you need to get one on there. It is an OSHA requirement, and if you ever have a visit by an OSHA personnel, they will be validating that information on your, on your equipment. So talking about age again, it, it is an important factor, not the only factor, but an important one. And in this example, um, we're talking about the, the average cost of a truck by age. And uh, the case study done by material handling showed that a majority of, of people out there have trucks that are 10 years old or more. And there is, and we have seen, an increase in that cost to run pieces of trucks that are older. So the example here, we are showing a 10-year-old truck with the annual utilization of about 12 to 1,500 hours. That cost to run that truck uh, versus a brand new one can give you an offset of maintenance savings of over $20,000. So because you own the piece of equipment doesn't necessarily mean that you're using the best cost-effective strategy based on the fact that older equipment is probably going to cost you more to run. And in this situation, you could have used that cost savings to, to put towards the acquisition of a newer piece of equipment. So we're talking about hours, and there are certain types of hours that can be acquired. And, and so to touch on that briefly, first and foremost, the hours that you'll hear most folks talk about are the dead man hours. So the, the dead man hours on a truck are very similar to what I would say like the odometer on a car. Um, these are the hours that are identified to determine warranty lengths. These are the hours we look at to set up uh, an appropriate schedule maintenance frequency. So uh, it, it's one of the key metrics that you can use for hours on a truck. Um, if you wanna look more granular into that, you can go as far as um, looking at travel hours, lift hours, some traveling with or without a load, you can dive down that hole quite far if you have the proper information. So the question becomes then, you know, how do I determine what those hours are? Well, there's a few different ways. I mean, in the old way, and we call the manual way, is where you would actually physically walk out to the truck and, and, and capture the hour meter off of it. Number one, you'd have to ensure that your truck has an hour meter and, and it's working, and then have someone on a regular basis do just that. Another way of doing it is, is a semi-automated way where you'd be reviewing this by maintenance work orders that you would have. Virtually all service providers out there when they perform maintenance of any type, whether it be scheduled maintenance or an unscheduled repair, will capture the hour meter reading and put it on the invoice so you would have a historical record based on time frames when they were in to do a particular repair and then came back at another date and time and you could determine utilization that way. And then the last way, which seems to start to being the, the norm is an automated way where people are using telematics to capture those hour meter readings. That's when you would physically bolt uh, hardware or equipment onto your material handling fleet and it could extrapolate that information from the equipment. Most of these types of systems would then either upload that information to a software program or to a web-based portal and that way, it's being updated virtually in real time and can be accessed from anywhere where you can access those reports. The way of the future and uh, the, the most accurate way to capture hour meters for sure. Talking about you know, standard hours, this is information that we had got from some of our clients. You know, I, I kind of mentioned it before, you know, industry standards are a good benchmark and it's a good place to start having a conversation but I wouldn't get too hung up on what the industry standards are. It really depends on your particular circumstance, whether you're a manufacturer or you work in distribution, um, how you use the equipment, the application, uh, it really does depend. But these are some average numbers that we had come up with historically. So with that average, we can talk about either under or overutilized pieces of equipment. And like we mentioned previously with, with comparing model trucks, there are certain outliers. You may not run as much hours on one particular model of equipment as opposed to another. And then perhaps you might have that particular piece of equipment with a specific need. I talked about uh, attachments uh, on certain trucks. Well, trucks with attachments could be used for 
specific loads or, or only used sparingly, so consequently their utilization may be less. And that's really where it's important that you look at this information on a case-by-case -case basis, um, what's specific to how you use your equipment. So cost per hour, um, that's something I think we've all heard of in the past. Um, you know, th that is a, a byproduct of, of two inputs of being your total cost versus your total hours. And by utilizing those, you can come up with a cost per hour. But I, what I would say to this is, I wouldn't recommend this being your, your only metrics and for various reasons. An example I'll use is, let's say you have a piece of equipment where you've only had one $500 repair for the year, but it's that piece of equipment that you know is rarely used and you may have only put five hours on it. Well, if you do the cost per hour formula, that truck would stand out like a sore thumb on a spreadsheet because its cost per hour is 100 bucks. So it's important that you look at that individually because there could be reasons as to why that they're there. And that's why I think it's important to look at multiple indicators uh, like application um, and model types because there could be reasons as to why you have a high cost per hour other than the fact it's time to replace the truck. Um, and here are some of those examples even more so. Whether you had a large repair which could, could skew that information, um, whether you're under and over utilizing the piece of equipment. So um, really it, it's a case by case basis. And if you see those high outliers, um, I think it's important to investigate a little further to determine that information is actually giving you the indications that you want. Some other things that you have to consider, the time. And when I mean time, I mean the time frames that you're looking at uh, when comparing your cost and cost per hour. We highly recommend and we have found what's more effective to look at that more as trends as opposed to overall historical. And the reason being, if you're one of those people that have a piece of equipment that's 10 years old or higher, if you're looking at historical costs for that truck, you have years one, two, and three offsetting your actual hours of op or cost of operation in years eight, nine, and 10. So you really want to look at it like an annual basis and then find the trends year to year as opposed to looking at, at an overhaul historical cost per hour. Downtime. This is a really big one, and, and I think it, it's a tough one to try to quantify, but I think it's important. Um, I, I have asked customers, you know, how much does it cost for you to have a truck down? And, and that really varies uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, but if you can actually put a number to that, that can help you determine where that life cycle is for your equipment. The older equipment that you have um, you know, may be down more than it normally would be for a newer piece of equipment, and that could have a higher cost to your operation th th than something otherwise. So important to capture what that is, and I don't think a lot of people have a good grasp of that. Age, we've discussed, you know, in a couple slides, uh, it is important as a general rule, as a piece of equipment does get older, um, we do see that costs do in fact increase. All in itself isn't the, the main determination, but it is an important component to consider. Here's an example of what we're talking about with age versus years. This is something too I think is important you look at model specifics because you do have those outliers. In this particular graph we see that uh, turret trucks and, and pallet trucks are on the opposite ends of the spectrum um, just because of the nature of their equipment, how much they cost to run and how they're used. And then you have your other pieces of equipment that kind of follow the, the, the middle of the road. So again, when you're looking at your cost per hour, we highly recommend that you do it model specific because of the differences in, in run and operating costs for these types of equipment. So what we're really talking about here is capturing as much information as possible and doing that by making sure you look at the factors that are involved. And it's not just cost per hour and age. There are other things you really need to consider but it's important that you capture as much information as you have. Um, you look at things like productivity for downtime, your rental costs, and all of that information is important. So once you can make the determination, you can be ensured that you have all the information that you need to start putting together a lift truck 
complete replacement strategy. Thank you, Chris. So we're going to discuss creating and implementing a fleet replacement acquisition strategy. And there are some key factors to take into consideration outside of the data accumulation and all of the key metrics that Chris spoke to. Some critical factors that also take into account are acquiring equipment when companies merge, new technologies that come into play, or just a previous strategy that already exists. Here's an example of a fleet replacement strategy uh, utilizing uh, Microsoft BI. These are tiles. Um, and what it's doing is accumulating all of the data that Chris spoke to earlier, av average age, utilization, and it's broken down individually by particular truck types. Having this data at your fingertips, be able to disseminate it clearly, concisely, and quickly is really critical. Not a lot of people put this information at their fingertips. Being able to break it down and assess where your problem areas both currently and being able to predict where they're going to be is, is key. So having a strategy in place allows you uh, the ability to make these decisions accurately with confidence. In putting together your strategy and looking at the metrics, you want to plan out in advance. Here you can see we're talking about four years beyond today. So we're talking about our current year. We're breaking it down by specific truck what type of truck they are, and we take all of those key factors, assemble them together, and put a plan in place. And one of those things to remember is that when you're assembling a plan, you stick to it. Uh, you're going to see very solid results when you follow a plan. You can always adjust and kind of follow the tick and tie of that plan uh, as business calls for, but staying focused on your program uh, long-term will yield better results. In these examples, you can see it's clearly laying out things that are driving factors, and there's a pattern year after year, high cost, high age, cost per hour. Utilization is clearly something to take into consideration depending on the environment, as we spoke to earlier. Here's an example when we're talking acquisition um, of rentals and how much an impact they can have. Rental costs over on the left side and then utilization for both owned and rental equipment is on the right. What we're seeing throughout a 12-month example is how much of a rise in rental costs we had. In addition, you can see that the business model, somewhere right around mid-year, May, June, uh, indicated that business had risen enough and the utilization of the equipment had gone up to warrant the additional use of rental trucks within the facility or the fleet. And as time went on, you see the internal or possessed equipment by the customer started to decline from a utilization standpoint, while the rental costs and the rental utilization stayed up. This is not a good thing. You want to see your utilization stay peaked, and you want the rental utilization to fall off, as well as the costs. So here in this specific example, you have a customer that is spending too much money when their own equipment is not being utilized. This plays into an acquisition strategy and making sure that you time it correctly and understand what is going on internally. So when we talk about acquisitions, we talk about the metrics, we put a plan together, put it in place, and we really want to focus on what those differences are and what that information provides. Short-term rentals obviously come into play, but you want those to be an immediate or an auxiliary support to a plan. You want to focus on purchasing and leasing. And no matter which way you acquire your equipment, you want to make sure that your program is solid and stays in place long-term um, and adjust based on that. So leasing would come into play more for a short-term plan, maybe for some of the customers who you know, whose fleets were in the three to five year range and purchasing may fit better for those long-term customers that have their equipment 10 plus years. And of course, that is just based on industry standards or the information that we have seen and doesn't fit everyone. Thank you, Scott and Christian, for presenting this material. We hope you found this information to be relevant and valuable to your organization. If you have any questions about forklift fleet strategies, please email us at info, that's I-N-F-O, at associated-solutions.com. Thank you and have a great day.